Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we are going to do an update on our garden, this late season garden. Yeah, yeah, we want to talk about the the things that worked, things that maybe need some improvement, and things we really enjoyed, things that we're not quite sure about. So uh, we wanted to kind of share that with you all because there were some really neat things we discovered, things that we definitely want to do again, and things that we may want to try elsewhere. <laughs> all right, so let's step into the garden. After you, ma'am. Okay, so here in the front bed, we did flowers and we did herbs and we did lettuces, spinach, just a multitude of things in this front bed. And it's crazy right now, um, but we've got zinnias, our lettuces, I did not end up pulling them up just because they kept producing so late. Um, and we just kept taking lettuce off, but it did eventually get covered up and is underneath there. So I let it, I just let it go to seed. Um, but we've got this crazy Malabar spinach, which when we planted, we had no idea that it was vining. And so when it did start to vine, as you can see all out here, and it's starting to go up our trellis here, we were like, oh my gosh, what kind of mutant spinach is that? <laughs> but anyway, it is going crazy here and we're still eating on it. We have been using the spinach in lieu of lettuces on sandwiches and then again also in our salads, but it's, it's been great. And like I said, still producing. So that's been a big winner. My herbs, especially the basil, went crazy. Um, mom, my mom had started these as seeds and gave me a little pot and I kept thinning and thinning and it just went out of control. And then I've got some oregano and thyme. My rosemary's back here, but these zinnias are so huge and I didn't realize they were gonna be so big. So I have to lift it up to get to my parsley, <laughs> which doesn't look like he's gonna make it much longer. And there's some little lavender hidden back here too that did well. So I'm excited about that. This is What's a there, beauty. <laughs> okay, so our sunflowers did really well and we'll, we'll walk around and show you some others that are still looking pretty. But we, all of the flowers that we incorporated this year just brought in the pollinators like crazy. But it also brought in birds. And so we would look out here and there would be finches, several finches and hummingbirds in all different areas, but the finches just kept landing on um, the sunflowers and breaking off branches, which is fine. It just doesn't look pretty right now. We also had um, extra peppers, so we just stuck all the peppers in anywhere we could find spots. And then our good friends gave us several uh, plants of strawberries that have done really well even though I just planted them this year and so I'm excited about them coming in next year and don't mind the weeds. Near the trellis on both sides I planted zucchini for the first time ever and we had what we've learned to be squash lady beetles and they've just completely eaten the leaves. And so the, um, these beetles have really destroyed a lot of the leaves, although I don't know that it's affected production because we have gotten quite a bit of zucchini. Maybe it has slowed it down to some degree. I don't know. This was my first year growing zucchini, but we did notice that it did quite a number on the cucumbers. So I'm assuming that that is what caused a lot of the damage to the cucumbers, although we have still gotten a ton of cucumbers this year, more than what my family wants to eat. So, <laughs> some. Okay, on this trellis, we had our um, spaghetti squash, which I believe I've got about five now, and noodle beans, and we're not exactly sure why, but the noodle beans have not done well at all. Um, they were very thin as far as the plants, 
didn't produce a ton as you can see there's just I mean really didn't produce enough for us even to have in a meal um, so we're not sure exactly what that was if it had to do with the lady beetles that we showed a little bit ago or if it was poor soil or what it might be however now we come over to our pumpkins and they have taken off like crazy got the lady beetles on but what we've just noticed is the lady beetles are migrating to the pumpkins and so um, I need to spray all these leaves to because I want to protect my pumpkins. Look. I knew you were going to ask me that. I've got cinnamon girl and snowball and I'm assuming that's a snowball. Because look at this one is a cinnamon girl. Okay, on this other side of the entryway, we've got the other front flower bed. And, um, well, you can see some of the flowers are still a little pretty. Along here, I planted some um, blue balloon flowers that are supposed to be late bloomers. Those have been pretty cool. And then some more random peppers two peppers, although they've fallen over in this storm, I guess. And then this is echinacea back here. Our peppers, bell peppers, we've got red and yellow, 15 plants, and they have done wonderfully. Um, and they're just really coming on being late part of the season, so they're getting a lot of red peppers and some yellow peppers and those are one of my very favorite things in the garden so I'm so excited about that but what you can see here are watermelon and these watermelon are trying to take over the garden they started at as four plants way down there <laughs> and they have just they're trying to take over and they're going everywhere. I grew some calendula this year, which is new for us. And then I've got basil plants all the way down here just because I kept thinning that original basil plant. And so I've got a basil coming out of my ears. We've got some Brad's grape tomatoes from Baker's Creek. And These are all Chadwick cherries. Down here we've got Roma. And then these are just coming on. I just got my very first Rebecca Allen slicing tomato yesterday. Um, so these are just starting. Let's And then at the end of this row, we have, um, well, we have all of these are cantaloupe. And then we had a wild volunteer <laughs> watermelon wild down here. Volunteer. It was wild. No, it was a volunteer from last year. And it doesn't have anything on it yet. But um, look at all these cantaloupe. I'm so excited. Water cantaloupe good for killing, just throwing over the hill. Right? No, they're good for eating. Several in there. Now, I don't know if we've never um, really had success with our watermelon um, or cantaloupe, and I've never had success like this, so I'm not sure if they're going to end up producing anything edible. <laughs> That's yet to be seen, but I'm excited about it. In this back portion of the garden, we kind of let it go, let the ground cover come back 
over it. Um, one to save soil. This back, we didn't have anything to plant here um, for this year, or nothing planned to plant here. Um, and this part of the garden kind of slopes off towards the hillside, and uh, we have runoff quite a bit. So, um, kind of a twofold thing as far as either lazy, not keeping it cut, but also kind of to help hold on to the soil. And so you can see here all along the perimeter, <laughs> we planted comfrey. Um, so I've got these plants going all along the fence line, um, all the way up the garden. And then back here, Troy's experiment with elderberry really took off. And so he's got quite a few plants that he's propagated here. And so he is very excited about that. And these are our garden centuries. So this has been their oasis um, from timber, <laughs> their retreat. Um, so they know that timber is not allowed in here and they can just jump right through the fence to get in here. But they <laughs> hang out here most of the time. One of the other reasons that they migrate here um, is because like I talked about earlier, all of the birds that have been attracted to the flowers. However, we've not seen any dead birds, so I'm hoping that they're not killing them and we don't want them to kill them. Um, but it's also been good that they hang out here because we have seen a couple of dead mice and moles. Um, so they've taken care of those as well. I believe I planted three types of carrots this year. And although we've had carrots grow in the past, not with the success that they did this year. Um, normally we just get little tiny ones because of the poor soil, but um, this year they had uh, much better soil than before and we actually got full-size carrots this year, so I'm very excited about that too. Um, one thing I almost forgot to mention, these are lima beans, and I've never grown lima beans before, or not successfully. And I don't know that I would call this a success either because um, we've not had <laughs> a ton of lima beans on it and the ones I've just pulled off recently aren't really big enough to harvest. So I don't know, I need to do a little bit more research on the lima beans because lima beans are one of my favorite things. Well we documented quite a bit in, in previous videos about our fence and um, I do just want to give a quick update on that. The fence has worked very well for many reasons. We obviously have not had any deer pressure. Uh, I wake up in the mornings and I can look out our bedroom window here and I see the deer on the hillside beside the garden, but they just don't seem to want to jump into this box. This, this controlled area just seems, um, I assume, seems bad for them. So the fence has worked well. Uh, the treated lumber does what treated lumber does. It moves a little bit, so uh, we may have to do some replacement next year. Uh, but the gate, um, the fence, all kind of really add to the aesthetics. Uh, Kelly's been pleased with the overall appearance from the outside looking in. It really makes the garden look finished and doesn't have uh, you know, such a rough look to it. So we'll do, uh, we're planning to do some more hardscape work this fall. So we may extend uh, this west side of the fence further back into the hillside and then east side we'll deal with that later. So one other hardscape thing that worked really well in the garden were these trellises. So Kelly asked me, she had seen uh, <clears throat> what Jessica had done on Roots and Refuge. We really like that idea. I've obviously used cattle panels and hog panels before. Oh, we did a video documenting this, but these panels worked really well for, tre for trellising. Just um, super sturdy. You can see obviously with these spaghetti squash hanging off of them, not making them bow at all. And the beauty of this is these, you know, these trellis, trellis eye, tre tre what's the plural of trellis? trellises um, should last for quite a few years even if we take them down or even if we leave them out uh, super sturdy super thick gauge uh, wire that they're made out of so we should be able to get years out of these and we also use those um, for our tomato trellises as well so you can see the um, using the t-posts and just the trellis panel with uh, I think <clears throat> for a 16 foot trellis panel we've got uh, three t-posts those are wired using electric fence wire and holding up the tomatoes quite well. Uh, the beans and uh, some of these others are, are not using cattle panels, they're using just welded wire, which is why the green beans have a bit of a gangster lean to them. 
So Kelly had talked about the carrots already, but I think one of the things that really allowed the carrots to do well was the building of soil, where we've been using uh, the deep litter method with our, uh, with our mulch. We're just getting some incredible soil. And again, if you've been with the channel for a while, you know that where we're standing is actually was excavated out of the side of the mountain. So this was sterile, just an absolute clay, hard pan mess. And we just amended the best we could with whatever we could find. And when we switched to wood chips, it really seemed to make the difference. And you can see these are uh, poplar planks that I put down in the past to help keep, with, uh, keep the weeds down. They've decayed quite, quite well and just turning into soil. The con of these, I don't know if that's picking up on camera, is this is just a habitat for carpenter ants. Carpenter ants are something that we have a lot here in West Virginia. And uh, there's one on my finger. And they, um, they obviously are attracted to all this wood chips. And I've noticed that even with my tame blackberries and around the front of the house, the ants seem to really gravitate toward the wood chips and then they come up and they eat a lot of the berries. So we've seen a lot of ants on some of our vegetables. Don't know if it's a huge issue as much as it is with the fruit, with the berries up front, because they'll actually eat into them. And when I go to eat, I walked by and ate one the other day and an ant had was inside it and it, it pinched down on my tongue and I couldn't get him off my tongue. <laughs> so he was hanging on for dear life. So the wood chips are good for building soil, but definitely bring in some more ants. I haven't seen any uh, termites, but uh, definitely, definitely been an ant issue. So with that being said, um, we, we've, had a, we've had a wet summer, but with that being said, we have yet to water this garden. I, what did you water? Maybe once this year? So I think we've watered the garden once the entire summer. We've had, this has been one of the hotter summers we've had. We've been in the mid-90s um, quite a bit. I think uh, the weatherman said 30 days we had been in the 90s throughout the course of June and July. So it's been very hot, but not having to water the, the, the soil just is, is still super wet. Now we did have rain last night, so it's not a good indicator of, of how things stay wet, but just really impressed with the fact that we haven't had to water much. Again, our pests have really been the only issue as far as uh, plant growth goes. Now the raised beds we put in the front, really like how those worked out. Again, so just putting some of these slabs in from the sawmill is how we build our raised beds and of course backfilled with some composted manure and then put the wood chips in. So as this is settled, uh, again, even if this rots out uh, over the winter time, we're not concerned about that. Just some great soil we're getting. Hey, look, Kel, whatever that reptile was that I seeded your garden with eggs, <laughs> they've hatched out. So whatever that was is free now. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't dinosaurs. So one other hardscape feature that's been nice is I guess it's kind of like a permaculture principle is you see here where I'm standing was a spot where we had our chicken tractor for our egg layers and those have since moved on we've got them here in the front yard now but the benefit of having the chickens so close by of course you know they're fertilizing the yards they're eating a lot of clover out we're getting some good nitrogen but it's it's really nice having um, uh, the chickens close by so we can take any spent vegetables toss them in here and then when I was uh, battling the squash lady beetles. I just take my little coffee can and go around and, and bang them all off into the, into the can and then come by and dump them out here for the chickens to eat. And the chickens would just wail on them. So um, it's nice having them nearby to be able to, to kind of do some of that work for us. You know, ideally when the garden dies out, we may turn them loose in there to scratch some stuff up, but I don't know if I want them tearing up my mulch so much. Let me show you here. So one other thing as hardscape goes, of course, we still got our Harbor Freight greenhouse still working fine. Haven't lost any panels, knock on wood. Uh, it's been holding up well. Obviously, just kind of working as a storage building right now, although I did see a volunteer broccoli. You must have dropped a broccoli seed in there, Kelly. It's growing. But with these little side alcoves and things, I've been able to put in more perennials. One of these little nooks that created, my, my nephew dug up some transplants of Chinese wine berries from their farm and he brought me five of those and those are starting to take off well. It's been so wet uh, back here, it's, it's been a little tough on them, but they're starting to take off. So this provides a, a nice buffer, A, to keep the dog out, uh, but B, the deer really don't mess with them, but these little alcoves allow me to park in some perennials. And then back here in the damp area of the backyard, is where we have our composting bin and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. Our grass cuttings go in there, I put some wood chips in there, uh, spent vegetables. 
anything and it's it's really doing its job we've seen a lot of mycelial growth in there there's mushrooms popping up all over the place so we know that's working doing its thing and of course aesthetically it doesn't look the prettiest so being tucked in behind the uh, greenhouse has been a, a great asset kelly's been adding some cut grass as she adds um, kitchen scraps and material like that then she just takes some of these grass clippings that are composting here in the wheelbarrow and tosses them on top so all in all we've been would you say satisfied with the garden? Absolutely. I really like that gate. <laughs> it's the cherry on top. It is. It really is. Pretty red gate. So been really satisfied with what we've gotten so far. It's I think it's kind of invigorated us to do an even bigger garden next year. I'm really more into the perennials. She likes the annuals, but uh, I think we've got a good marrying of that. So we just want to take over more of our backyard. We've got the slopes to, to either side and the hillside behind us here. So we've got a lot of areas that we can expand. We just have to figure out how to incorporate that you know, rough terrain into it. And if you haven't been to our website lately, check that out. We've added some more blog content and recipes to the website. Yes, Kelly's been documenting a lot of the recipes that she's been using, and I, of course, have been testing a lot of the recipes. So that's why I continue to be the shape that I am. Is that possible because they were low carb? <laughs> <laughs> they were diet recipes. <laughs> yeah, but I keep eating really. <laughs> eat all of them, the entire recipe. Um, also, this is going to be our last notification before we do our drawing to give away our Olights. Uh, we've been uh, offering that here for the past several weeks. So if you're not on our email newsletter list, uh, then you need to do so, and that automatically registers you to win our Olight. So we'll be doing that drawing this weekend. Whenever this video comes out, it'll be the weekend after that we do. <laughs> so be sure to be on that, and we'll announce the winner coming up soon. And comment below as to what has worked for you this year or what you've had difficulties with. Like dogs. <laughs> they have been nothing but a blessing to us. Oh, yes. Look at these blessings. My life feels so much fuller now. Mr. Dirty Paws. I'm so enriched by having this house dog on the farm. He's bad. All right, take care, everybody.